So for one, and today I've got a potential good quality company to look at. I believe it's good quality and therefore it could deliver a positive return to your investment portfolio. Let's jump in and have a look at Edwards Life Sciences. Not a company I've come across before, but actually they're almost a $50 billion market cap. Let's jump into the screen, have a look at what they do. Now here it is, Edwards Life Sciences is a medical company. Have a look at what they do. These are very clearly key important treatments or factors in treatments for patients. And these are looking at things such as cardiovascular disease, physical illness. These are things that aren't going away. And in fact, as the populations around the world live longer, these products is probably going to increase. Simply Wall Street shows they're found in 1958. So yeah, it looks like this is the sort of company that could be quite an interesting buy. But at the very least, an interesting consideration. So I want to show you first of all why I think it could be a good quality company. Because if it's not a good quality company, it may not be worthy of consideration, or it may be a risk of investment. The way I'd decide on a good quality company, as we flip through on the ticker terminal, and look at the last 10 years or so of results, we start off with return on capital. So this company, you can see from this return on capital, very consistently above 20%, and in fact, often closer to 30%. High return on capital indicates that the business uh, effectively invests well into itself, and if a company like this has a lot of room for growth, they're not even going to pay a dividend either, because they're going to be much better at getting a better return from reinvesting that money back into the business. It looks like it's almost a bit like a good quality management, because good quality management is potential conclusion from a company that derives a consistently good return on capital. And it's not just this return on capital that's important. Let's look at the gross margin. Um, cost of sale effectively. Gross margin is in that 70 to 80% region. They've got some pricing power. And in fact, it's gone up in recent years in towards 80%. They've got pricing power. They can deal with inflation. This is a good trait for the company. But uh, yeah, is their operation profitable? That's kind of what we want to know next. You look at those operating margins, you are talking always above 20%, and in fact, sometimes above 30%. So the trend on the operating margin, the black line is going up, as is the trend on the gross margin. Really excellent figures. So this is a company to me that looks like a high level, a high quality company. Now there is one caution that the cash conversion is not as high as it could be. Cash conversion is the ability of them to translate profit into free cash flow. And they've got a little bit worse of that in the last year or two. Generally speaking, that figure has been 90% plus. They've established for me they're a good quality company, maybe even a high quality company. But then we need to look at their chance of failure because it's no good being good quality if they can't afford debt payments, for example. So we then move down here to the ratios, and let's just clear this chart out. Yeah, we're on ratios, so EBIT to interest expense, massive, you know, you're at over 80 times. And you know, if this was 20 times or above, they'd be pretty happy with that. So they have the ability to cover their interest expenses, uh, increasingly so, in fact, in recent years. And if we look at that combined with the debt to equity, the debt to equity ratio has been dropping. We're now down at 10%, but way below 100%, which might be my cutoff point. But that's moving in the right direction, as you can see from the black line. And then finally, the ability to pay short term bills, the current ratio. Really want that to be above one, higher the better to an extent. And we're looking at consistently. Um, or mainly above three. So we can have a look here. This is all looking really good on the graph and the trends are good as well. High quality company, low charts failure. So from an investing perspective, I'm thinking this is a potential investment. And as Terry Smith of the Fundsmith Fund says, you, know, you want the high quality companies, you don't need to get them cheap, you don't need to get them undervalued because of the way the long-term compounding works with high return on capital companies. Just make sure you don't overpay. 
So the valuation is coming up next. But I want to look at some other factors first. We established earlier that the sector is suitable is for dividends. And in fact, in this case, there, according to Simply Wall Street, if it will load up properly, there we go, there is no dividend. The company is actually quite sensible. No point in this company paying a dividend given the growth that they're having. And in fact, we can look at growth. Go back to the Pika terminal and the income statement. That revenue, 2 billion 2013, it going up 3 billion, then up to 4, then up to 5. Really impressive. And then the operating income, 400 to 500 million, up to a billion, and then over 1.5 billion. So this is looking like it's all moved in the right direction. And that's because they haven't been paying out dividends, they've been reinvesting back into the business. We don't need to look out dividends, we don't need to look out payout ratios. We do, ladies and gentlemen, need to look at the number of shares outstanding to see if they've been doing buybacks or diluting shareholders. We can have a look here. Number of shares outstanding was 680 million and that's gone down, coming out 615 million. Change year on year is generally speaking negative, not by huge amounts. They're not wasting loads of money on buybacks because they can grow the business so well. It has been a very gentle downward trend. So it's a company that has been growing. It's a company that's unlikely to fail, at least from these high level metrics. So therefore, what's the growth looking like in the future? I go to Yahoo Finance and the analysis tab. And there's a lot of analyst coverage 23. So you're not going to get any surprises this being an undervalued company because so many people know about them and they're big. And we're looking at 10% a year for the next five years, which is quite similar to the past five years. So consistent, steady growth. I'd also like to look at a second opinion, simply Wall Street future growth, effectively saying 10% as well. So I'm going to assume the purposes of calculating potential return that they're going to grow at 10% a year. So that P ratio to save 33 could, in uh, five years' time, be as low as 21 as a forward PE, which actually feels a bit more reasonable. I can see this company easily trading at P of 20 in the long term, if not higher. Now the free cash flow yield is very low, so it's it's definitely not a uh, it's definitely what you call a cheap company. At you know, 1.5%, very, very low, although the free cash flow figure has dropped a bit recently, so it might be just artificially low um, for this year. We can also look at, um, I've done a bit of a discounted cash flow going forward. Um, I've looked at it from a couple of methods, and um, I've also looked at adding up the free cash flow yield to the growth rate, which is also another way to estimate potential return. So I have um, potential return. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says first as a bit of a back pocket. Perhaps not what we used to make the decision on, but just a bit of a check. So they're saying it's actually fairly valued. There's an argument to say this is a company that's fairly valued, i.e. you're not overpaying, given the quality of the company, the longevity of the company, the return on capital, most importantly, this should actually be a buy. Now, this is at a 6.6% 6 .6 discount rate, Simply Wall Street. So that suggests if you want a 6.6% 6 .6 per year return, it's fairly valued. You could probably increase that to 7 or 8%. percent you would not be massively overpaying. But more than that, assuming their calculations are correct, you'd probably be overpaying. Now, my estimate, the potential return, for best in this company, and this is my personal estimate, I'm not saying or recommending you buy or don't buy, just showing general information. And I would estimate the return per year over a period of time be between 4.3% a year, worst case scenario, and 11.5% a year, best case scenario. Look at it between 4.3 and 11.5. I ideally want a minimum of 10% a year, doesn't really give much wiggle room there, margin of safety, because the amount of that um, estimate below 10% and even below uh, 6 or 7% is quite a lot. And according to this, if the estimate's right, the upside above 10% is only to 11.5. So it does tick all the boxes, apart from it may be very early to buy a, uh, a large position, still be overpaying. So for me, if I had a very small portfolio, and I had a, a small number of positions, I'd probably open a staff position. However, 
my personal circumstance, and this is just for me, I've got a lot of holdings. I need to sell um, holdings before buying new holdings because I don't want to increase the number of positions I've got. From an individual stock perspective, probably worth a starter position. From a portfolio perspective, specifically for me, it's not a buy unless I sell something first. So I'm going to have a look at that because this is a higher quality company than several of the companies in my portfolio. So I'm not recommending anything to you. What I would suggest is general guidance. Try and get high quality companies in the portfolio if you're a long term investor. And also do consider whatever your rules are for your portfolio. Do consider that portfolio level approach. I hope you found that really interesting as a whistle stop tour. Now, if you want to see how this would fit into my portfolio as a wider entity, there's a link coming up on the screen now. Otherwise, please do consider clicking on my channel page, looking at the stock review playlist to find more bits of analysis like this if you're looking for potential investment for your portfolio. And you never know, you may just find that gem that could generate you a double digit return going forward. No promises, but hopefully find it useful. I'll see you on the next video.